So we're going to cover uh, fractures about the uh, the acetabulum, femur, uh, femoral head, and dis uh, dislocations as well. Our first uh, is the hip question is from the hip uh, conditions module, question number 16. And it's a 72-year-old female who sustained a displaced intracapsular uh, femoral neck fracture and asks which of the following is true regarding the long-term differences between possible treatment, treatment options for this injury. And let's see here. I am unfortunately having some difficulty advancing. Oh, just uh, click Eric. those forward arrow and the back arrow on the bottom left-hand side of the corner. OK, see if it'll work that way. And so the answer here is patients undergoing total hip arthroplasty are less likely to require reoperation than those undergoing internal fixation. And what this question reflects is that elderly patients uh, with femoral neck fractures that have fixation of those displaced uh, intracapsular fractures are at a relatively high risk for having reoperation as a result of uh, loss of fixation. So to review the femoral neck fracture literature, <clears throat> let's first begin by uh, discussing uh, the associated injuries that can occur with patients that suffer intertrochanteric fracture, or, or rather femoral neck fractures. There's a high degree of uh, femoral shaft fractures, 69%. Uh, and these patients have a, uh, a high mortality rate. Uh, anywhere between 25 and 30% have been uh, reported. And the predictors of that, uh, of that mortality are the pre-injury mobility, uh, how significant they're impaired. And additionally, patients with chronic renal failure <clears throat> uh, have uh, higher uh, mortality rates. And that's uh, one of the questions that we've seen uh, relatively frequently. Looking at the anatomy, uh, as you heard uh, in, uh, from the other speakers, the main blood supply to the femoral head comes from the medial circumflex vessel. There are other contributors. But a displacement of the femoral neck uh, can disrupt that blood supply. When you look at classification of femoral neck fractures, uh, there are, um, we classically look at uh, the garden uh, classification system, broken down in types one through four. But you can simplify that by looking at uh, displaced versus non-displaced fractures. Those that uh, uh, are displaced typically will have uh, one type of management versus the ones that are non-displaced consider opposite. In addition to uh, the degree of displacement, we can look at the, the angulation of the fracture line. Uh, and that's the Powell's classification. And patients that have a, a very vertical fracture uh, 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 from the horizontal, more than 50 degrees, are at higher risk of both avascular necrosis and non-union. When, <clears throat> when we look at um, uh, this question, this is from the HIP module, number, question number 19. And figures A and B are radiographic images of an 85-year-old female with an isolated left hip pain. She describes a non syncopal fall, and it occurred four hours ago. The physical examination reveals pain with rolling of the hip, and she's unable to bear weight on that leg. The radiologist reports available to you, and it shows no evidence of fracture. So <clears throat> in this circumstance, you can see both a plain radiograph and a CT scan that's been obtained, and there's no obvious uh, disruption of the trabeculae uh, and no obvious fracture. So the, the answer, what they're asking you to do, is give you uh, what the next best treatment step would be. And that's going to be an MRI of that hip. An MRI has been shown to be able to detect occult fractures earlier than bone scan and with better spatial resolution. So for situations in which an MRI is not immediately available, um, bone scan can be used, but it's really not going to show uh, evidence of the fracture for about 48 hours, or about 72 hours. If you look at <clears throat> radiographic evaluation of the patient with a femoral neck fracture, CT scan can be helpful in determining the degree of displacement uh, in comminuted fractures in some patients, but it's not uh, one of the, it's not what we would normally first reach. Typically, we're going to look at our plain radiographs, both an AP pelvis and a uh, cross table lateral. That uh, will help us with the degree of displacement. 
And as previously mentioned, the bone scan can be helpful um, for to rule out a cult fracture that's more than 72 hours old. And when we talk about late presentation, uh, there ha are going to be questions or can be questions about the potential for um, evaluation in that circumstance. Patients that are, are delayed in presentation with hip fractures are at a higher risk for the development of, of DVT and consequently duplex scanning is indicated. In this question, uh, looking at femoral neck fractures, it's a 70-year-old female, a uh, 70-year-old patient uh, with Parkinson's disease who sustains a fall onto his hip. Uh, he denies any history of antecedent pain and is otherwise healthy. The radiograph of the affected hip uh, shows uh, is shown. So on the right side, you can see a displaced femoral neck fracture. You can see pretty profound arthritis on his uh, left side as well. And the question focuses on the best treatment for this patient and asks uh, what would be uh, what that would be. And in considering the question, the thing that uh, is most uh, remarkable about the history is not only the displacement, but the fact that the patient has Parkinsonism. So he is at relatively high risk for dislocation if he were to have uh, treatment other than hemiarthroplasty. So the selection here uh, is for uh, hemiarthroplasty, neurologic conditions. When you look at treatment for femoral neck fractures, open reduction and internal fixation is almost always recommended as a first-line treatment in physiologically young patients. And that can be defined in a number of different ways. <clears throat> you can uh, proceed with cannulated screw fixation, but in these displaced femoral neck fractures in young patients, it's considered a surgical emergency. In those patients with more complex fracture patterns, uh, a sliding hip screw or uh, cephalomedullary nail may be considered, uh, particularly those that have a basal cervical fracture or uh, in which uh, the uh, fracture pattern is more vertical. Again, uh, hemiarthroplasty, typically reserved for the de uh, debilitated elderly patient. And patients uh, that are um, more active, you can consider uh, total hip arthroplasty. It's more uh, predictable with regard to pain relief, better functional outcomes than hemiarthroplasty, but it's usually reserved for patients under 85 years of age and in whom uh, were uh, community ambulators before. If you look at techniques for cannulated screw fixation, um, three screws have been shown to be superior to two screws, and the orientation of those is uh, an inverted triangle. It also uh, is better if you can place those three screws closer to the calcar and in a lower aspect of the femoral head. And the starting point uh, for that most inferior screw should be at or above the level of lesser trochanter to avoid a risk of, of fracture in the subtrochanteric area. Looking at hemiarthroplasty, uh, posterior approach is, uh, shows a slightly higher risk of uh, dislocation. Anterolateral approach has a, it is complicated by uh, increased or the potential for increased abductor weakness. And most series show that uh, cemented is superior to uncemented techniques in this osteoporotic uh, patient cohort. Looking at femoral neck fracture, um, total, looking at total hip arthroplasty, again, improved functional uh, hip scores and lower reoperation rates compared to hemiarthroplasty but that's uh, punctuated by a higher risk of dislocation, which can be up to 10% in some series, uh, five times higher than, than hemiarthroplasty. And this question, question number 22, it's a 65-year-old patient who was treated initially with open reduction and internal fixation of a left femoral neck fracture, uh, which they sustained 25 years ago. It then uh, went uh, forward with uh, converted to a uh, hemiarthroplasty five years ago, and he complete uh, complaints of uh, groin pain for the last six weeks. The radiograph is visible here. The patient has some laboratory values that uh, include a WBC of 8.0, uh, sedimentation rate of 20, CRP of 0.5, and a synovial fluid aspirate that demonstrates less than 500 cells at 60% PMNs. <clears throat> 
And what this question is really asking you uh, to evaluate uh, is whether the, the source of the pain, and in, in this circumstance, there is no evidence of infection, which is obviously something that uh, would be considered. And it asks the examiner really to to rule out some of these other um, pathologic findings and evaluate uh, by uh, by virtue of uh, looking at the uh, at the X-ray. And here you can see on the X-ray that the hip is protru uh, protrused. <clears throat> Complications that can occur from uh, femoral neck fractures include osteonecrosis, which can occur up to 10 to 45 percent of the time, and it increases in, in, in uh, instance with the degree of displacement of the initial fracture. In older patients uh, with displacement, prosthetic replacement, either hemiarthroplasty or total hip arthroplasty is a recommended treatment of choice. Again, looking at complications. Um, patients can suffer from a non-union. That can occur anywhere from 5 to 30 percent. And it, again, also uh, corresponds to the degree of displacement of the fracture. When a non-union does occur, uh, one potential treatment op op option is to consider an intertrochanteric osteotomy, uh, which is a valgus osteotomy or Powell's osteotomy. Free vascular fibular grafting, even in the presence of uh, avascular necrosis within the femoral head, can be considered. And in older patients or those with uh, a completely non-viable femoral head, uh, arthroplasty is indicated. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.